Welcome to the show. I'm Antisocial. And this is the Antisocial Network. I want to talk to her, but I, my face is up against the wall. I think she wants to talk to me, but I'm antisocial. Yeah. Welcome to the mini-series, where I read you my old journal and blog entries. This week, we revisit my time living in Hollywood, review the book Water for Elephants, and remind the listeners that DUIs aren't the only reason not to drive drunk. Stay tuned! Wednesday, April 13th, 2011. A diary of things I've seen in Hollywood. Today I went to the laundromat. My apartment complex has some machines, but they are down in the dirty garage that kind of smells like pee and I just don't trust them. I was dreading going to the laundromat, but it turned out to be okay. I forgot that those industrial machines are bigger and much faster, so I got out of there reasonably quick for what I anticipated. Plus, I did six loads at a time. Do you know how long that would have taken me with one machine? Plus, there was free Wi-Fi and cute boys to look at, and I wrote a long book review while I was there. It reminds me of this Kurt Vonnegut quote about telling his wife he's going to walk to the store to buy an envelope. Oh, she says, you're not a poor man. You know, why don't you go online and buy a hundred envelopes and put them in the closet? And so I pretend not to hear her and go out to get an envelope because I'm going to have a hell of a good time in the process of buying one envelope. I meet a lot of people and see some great looking babes and a fire engine goes by and I give them with a thumbs up and ask a woman what kind of dog that is. And, and I don't know. The moral of the story is, is we're here on earth to fart around. And of course the computers will do us out of that. And what the computer people don't realize or they don't care, is we're dancing animals, you know? We love to move around, and we're not supposed to dance at all anymore. I just love that fire engine thumbs up part. I like to blow kisses at fire trucks sometimes. So anyway, it was a nice time at the laundromat, but on the way to the laundromat, I saw a car accident. Well, the aftermath of one. I know they happen a lot here. I'm not one of those people who slows down and cranes my neck around to gawk at wreckage, and I can't stand people who do. But I just so happened to be stopped at a red light in such a way that provided me front row tickets, so to speak. I was heading north on La Brea, waiting to turn left onto Sunset. To my left, there was a smashed up beamer, kitty corner to traffic, blocking the eastbound lanes of Sunset. Stopped for at least one light cycle, I took advantage and stared shamelessly for once. The car wasn't up on the curb, and I couldn't see any other smashed up thing around. So I couldn't fathom how the accident occurred. I started to have some real sympathy for this guy whose BMW was totaled, even though he was wearing flip-flops with pants and white plastic sunglasses. You have to admit, that would suck for anyone. I started to wonder who the idiot was walking in and out of traffic dressed like Al fucking Capone until I realized he was a real-life detective. I wished he had a cigar in his mouth. It would have perfected the look so well. Who knows, maybe he was cutting back. But he was big and portly with a pinstripe suit on and had this smart hat tilted to the side and a big shiny badge hanging around his neck. Now that I'm recalling it, I'm not entirely sure it wasn't a movie set I happened upon. So even though I'm totally gawking myself, I begin to get really aggravated with the crowd of onlookers that is gathered on the sidewalk. I mean, who the fuck are these people? And you know, three out of four of them have their stupid 90s flip phones open and they're taking pictures or video of it. I mean, really, who has a flip phone anymore? I start getting mad, muttering to myself, just what the hell do you think you're going to do with those images anyway? Then I'd say to myself in a dopey, mocking voice, Hey dude, check out this accident I just saw, imagining they must be sending picture messages to their friends. I can't stop myself and I continue, Go to fucking film school, you nards, what are you doing? I don't know why it drives me so batshit crazy, but I'm sick of people thinking they need to document every single goddamn incident that takes place in their life. And in true irony, believe it or not, I think I did sarcastically exclaim something to the effect of, Hey, why don't you go blog about it? March 26th, 2011. Anti-equal rights. Campaign logo. I saw this sticker on the back of yet another car today, and it finally materialized in my brain that I'm anti the equal rights campaign logo. Just look how subtle it is. 
It's almost like you have to be in a secret society just to know what the person is saying by having one on their car. Aw, it's like you guys are in a club. <laughs> no, fuck that. This is the equal rights campaign. You know, as in the campaign for equality. It's like they're trying not to offend someone. What the hell are you being so PC about? It's supposed to be in your face. Have some guts or ethical standards. Don't be afraid to shake things up a bit. Shit. You've already damaged the resale value of your car by sticking that thing to your bumper. Might as well be a pioneer of culture and a person of moral fiber. Why not actually show it with something more than a, a lame-ass blue and yellow electrical outlet? You know, like a picture of a man smacking his testicles up against the face of another man. It would effectively piss off those conservative teabaggers while proclaiming your support for gay marriage and progressive values. Plus, it's got just enough clever irony to provide that witty inside joke appeal. I say do it! Or something like it. But don't put that on your car. It's like it doesn't even mean anything. Be original. Show some balls. May 17th, 2011. Water for Elephants. In response to a friend's Facebook status, Water for Elephants, read it. And a friend who commented, well, so, review it. I wrote, here's your review. Dude, that book was fucking stupid. They never even fucking tell you why the old man is so goddamn pissed about carrying water for elephants. They make it seem so goddamn important. They even name the book Water for Elephants. But they never even fucking explain what the deal is with the water. And furthermore, the fact that the story keeps drifting between memories of the past and him waking up in his retirement home is such a bullshit cliche tactic to make the book longer. I don't give a fuck about the pretty nurse opening and closing the drapes. Get back to the real meat about the circus. What, did the author not do enough research on circuses to fill an entire book? And I'm sorry, it was totally predictable. I knew his dumb family was never going to show up from page one. I know the whole retirement home part was an integral part to make the ending make sense, but fuck the ending too. It was a cop-out, and that would never really happen anyway. It was supposed to be a feel-good moral about being able to do whatever you want, no matter how old you got, but it was unbelievable. A modern-day circus would never pick up some senile, crotchety old man and take him away with them. I would rather read a book that was simply about a traveling circus. Period. And I read good books, damn it. It's no wonder this piece of crap was made into a movie. And you know what's funny is, it's not like anyone's going, Oh no, auntie, you didn't get the book. Here, let me tell you why it's so important about the water for elephants. And you know why? Because they don't fucking know either. And this book was recommended to me by like five friends before I went out and bought it. And many of them said what my friend on Facebook said. I finished it in like two days. You know what? That doesn't make it a page turner or a great book that makes it a fucking $10 paperback you buy at the check stand so you have something to read on the bus ride home. It's a 300 page magazine. Sunday, February 27th, 2011. The significance of poo on Hollywood Boulevard. Earlier this week, I decided to walk up Hollywood Boulevard because the Oscars were going to be happening today and the whole street was in a hullabaloo, teeming with busy people setting up for the big day. It was people watching at its best. They close down the whole street and enclose it with temporary fences. You can still walk up and down the sidewalk and look at the celebrity stars on the boulevard or visit Grauman's Chinese Theater, but the presence of the fence truly illuminates the reality everyone's feeling. You can cut it with a knife. It's the us and them feeling. Even the people on the inside of the fence are people watching, because our side of the fence is filled with just as much interesting eye candy. Sure, they've got attractive, perfectly groomed, on-screen TV personalities, but we've got homeless people with no legs polishing the star walk. We've got human shit on the sidewalk. We've got real life over here. And I did catch them looking at us. No-name sound guys laying cable or carrying heavy equipment who you could tell were trying to keep the holy shit, I can't believe I'm here, thoughts they were thinking from showing on their faces. But when you take in the big picture, Hollywood Boulevard is ugly. It's dirty and cheap and touristy, just like New York or San Francisco or Washington, D.C. or any other big city with poverty and crime and fucked up shit. There's really nothing glamorous about it. Already I've become acutely aware of certain nuances about L.A. For instance, everyone is far more aware of labels and branding. I keep seeing a sign for orange juice that says, America's best tasting orange juice never looked so good, with a picture of a bottle of orange juice. All I can imagine is that they have new packaging? Anyway, who cares what my orange juice looks like? You said yourself it's the best tasting. Anyhow, I guess people here don't think that way, because three times in one week, different people have made statements to me about specific brands in regards to status. I've also noticed that really nice buildings are contained behind gates. 
I'll notice a really spectacular looking apartment complex with doormen, a gym, security guards, and gate codes directly across the street from a shabby, crappy, graffiti ridden hole. To me, that's a bad neighborhood. I don't care how spectacular the complex is, if I have to stay in my own little world and never leave my gated community and still hear sirens all night long, that's not a nice community. But that's not how LA works. You could literally be driving through desolation one second and the next you're in Beverly Hills. In fact, a woman just this month backed out in Beverly Hills and ran over and killed a homeless guy that was sleeping at the bottom of her own driveway. The line between extreme wealth and absolute poverty is so fine, it's no wonder they have to create arbitrary things like branding to help them distinguish themselves. When I moved here, I thought to myself, dang, I'm going to have to drive through a car wash or something because that long drive left my car all gross and buggy. And looking around LA and very quickly realizing the commodity of covered parking, or even more exclusive, a house with a driveway where you can actually wash your car whenever you want, I noticed that having a clean car is also a symbol of, stat of status. Because of course, if your car is spotless, you can afford prime real estate. Car land. I have always understood that celebrities are just people, but it's even more shocking to me how much more regular they must be than we even think now that I can walk around here and see how crappy Hollywood is. I remember saying to my dad last week, you know, there's a lot more pictures of attractive people in Hollywood than there are actually attractive people. I mean, there's ads and billboards everywhere, and I kept wondering, where are all these models? Sure, everyone moves here to achieve their dreams, but where are they? I was amazed how accessible Hollywood Boulevard is, how the Beverly Hills Whole Foods is just right there. So you mean to tell me all those rich, brilliant artists and models are walking around this? In LA, there's all sorts of neat looking buildings and hotels with signs on their marquees that say, film here, for booking information, call. Like every place is available for rent, but they're right next to a jack-in-the-box or a chevron. Seriously, it's like the realization I had when I went to Washington, D.C. for the first time. In cartoons and movies, what you see of D.C. is all the amazing national monuments. So I had this image in my mind that everything was pristine and white and clean, and there was, like, street sweepers in the street making our nation's capital a place we could all be proud of. But when I saw the place, it was a filthy city, like any other city. And sure, there's cool things in L.A., but it's a filthy city. Like any other city. And on Hollywood Boulevard, they had to put big tarps up and cover unsightly ads or buildings so that they wouldn't be seen by the Oscar cameras. It's all magnificently orchestrated so that you don't see how completely ordinary it all is. And that's all it is. Just a place with poo on the streets where women in $400 shoes try to pretend it's not there because they choose not to look at it. Thursday, March 24th, 2011. A Diary of Things I've Seen in Hollywood. I went on a walk today. I passed by a wig store that had a mannequin wearing a mustache. I busted up laughing and then tried to reason with myself that the mannequin head also had eyebrows and it very well might be a devastating loss of dignity to lose one's eyebrows. And it was a very nice salt and pepper color. Nothing too over the top, very dignified. But I mean, a mustache? Really? That's just pretentious. I also saw a woman sweeping the sidewalk outside of her store with a dust vac. What the fuck? February 12th, 2013. You're missing the point. I've been thinking about this general idea as a topic for some time, but something happened to me just now that made me finally decide to sit down and pound this out. I'd walked to the corner store and was en route home, stopped at a crosswalk. I was standing there waiting for the light to turn green when a man across the street approached the same crosswalk. He looked both ways and then started to cross. I remained on my side, still waiting for the light. He got about three quarters of the way across the street and said to me, half laughing, <laughs> Are you afraid of getting a ticket? No, I said. I'm afraid of getting hit by a car. I scoffed, sort of irritated with his willingness to write me off as a square for obeying traffic laws. He went on, full laughing now, but there's no cars. Dude, my life isn't worth not waiting three seconds, I said to him. I'm not in a hurry. And as he passed, he continued laughing and then just kept walking. Hey, fuck you, man. First of all, you're missing the point. Even if I did get a ticket for crossing against the light, it would be to enforce a law set in place for my own good, so I won't die. Yeah, sure, maybe the cop would be a dick in that scenario, but that's a story for another day. I, I skate all the time in the street, which means I avoid getting hit by cars on a regular basis. And more importantly, I drive a car. So I know that cars can come out of nowhere and people driving them can be like, texting or any number of things that may cause them not to slow down, even if I am in plain view in the middle of a crosswalk. Plus, I'm not in a hurry. Plus, just fuck you, okay? 
A while back, I saw a bumper sticker that said, Drink and drive. Lose your license. I couldn't believe it. Was this some sort of sick joke? I thought to myself, uh, you people realize that's not why you're not supposed to drink and drive, right? You could kill somebody! I honest to God thought it was a premise for a fucking SNL sketch or something. How could someone honestly believe that's the prime motivation for not drinking and driving? Furthermore, not just one person thought so. Apparently enough people think so to warrant it being put on a damn bumper sticker. It's sick. I saw that bumper sticker several, several years ago, though the premise really bothered me, as in the type of person that would even put that on their car. I blocked it in, out of my mind. Though I do think of it from time to time, I admit I've never seen one since. But driving to work recently, I saw this. A billboard with a picture of a guy on it blowing into a breathalyzer on the side of the road, and the caption reads, You just blew $10,000. As in, that's the average cost of a DUI? Am I overreacting, or is this a skewed perception of reality? I always cringe every time I see a baby on board sign in a car window, because I feel like it's an implication that I'd say I should drive safer because I know there's a baby in proximity. Look, asshole, I obey the rules of the road because it's the law, not because you had a fucking baby. But as my brother has advised me, you just can't say anything about people's kids. They get crazy, and the people with kids that will defend them always outnumber you, so just, that's a battle you don't want to fight, basically. But this thing with not drinking because you could lose your license or because it's really expensive, that just fucking pisses me off. And maybe the guy's lighthearted remarks crossing the street meant nothing, but what's wrong with people? Am I wrong to think this behavior is indicative of a general attitude of just plain selfishness and assholery? Is there something underlying here? Maybe I'm just sensitive. Maybe I just don't understand advertising and what really gets through to people. But I like to believe we're smarter than that. And by smarter, I mean, like, more human. I don't know. Maybe it would be better to have a billboard of a really gruesome, bloody wreck. Thanks for joining me this week. This bonus episode was sponsored by One Coffee Bean is All You Need, Pegasus Penises, and your mom! Find me on Instagram at The Antisocial Network, catch me on the app Stereo, and if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to my Patreon for only $5 a month to receive access to two bonus storytelling episodes a month, and to support my dream of content creation. That's my show. Later! But I'm into social ball, yeah.